How's it going guys, Shizukats here, and today we're heading into the Dragon's Lair. Patch 1.3.0 has introduced a new boss in the Tower of Remembrance, and today we'll be going over how to access this boss, how to fight it, and what you can get from defeating it. Let's get started. First up, let's go over how you can make this boss appear. The first thing you have to do is defeat every elite enemy in every area that encompasses the 8 bonfires of battle that are currently available in the game. This means that you do not have to hunt down any of the elite enemies that are in areas past Master of All, such as Flames Grace, Victor's Hollow, or Donesk. Here's a quick tip to help you hunt down any elite enemies you might be missing. When using your fast travel menu, there are two sections that you want to look at. The elite enemies section itself, and the treasure chest section at the bottom. Both of these are vital in figuring out where you need to go to find any missing elites. Obviously, if you see any elite enemies that aren't X'd out in the elite enemies section, this means that you haven't beat them yet. However, these aren't the only elite enemies in those areas. You've probably noticed throughout your travels that some elite enemies are just chilling out in the wilderness, while others are guarding treasure chests. The ones that are guarding chests do not show up on the list of elite enemies. Instead, verify that every enemy has all of its treasure chests opened. If you find any areas that have some missing chests that you haven't opened yet, there might be an elite out there somewhere that you haven't defeated yet as well. Once you've defeated all elite enemies in each region, it unlocks a new bonus boss at the very top of each section of the Bonfires of Battle. These bosses drop items called Legendary Ash, which can be used to upgrade stamp weapons. As of patch 1.3.0, the final two areas of the Bonfires of Battle have been added to the game, so you can now fight all eight of the bonus bosses. Once you've defeated all eight, what you want to do is go back to the room with all the bonfires and then attempt to leave the tower through the center fire and walk out the front door. This will trigger a cutscene which unlocks a new bonfire, also in the center of the room. By going through this bonfire, you'll enter the dragon's lair, where you can then take on the shadow dragon. Next, let's go over the dragon itself. It has roughly 280,000 HP, starts with 20 shields, and has 275 speed. In terms of difficulty, it's roughly the same difficulty as Thurston, the fight right before Tikilen in the Tikilen Cup. If you're able to beat Tikilen and or Glossom, then this fight should be no problem at all. The Shadow Dragon is weak to swords, axes, bows, ice, and light. However, at any given point, the dragon can lock up to two weaknesses at a time. At the beginning of the fight, it will always lock axe and bow. All of its weaknesses will be available while it's broken, and at the end of the turn after it comes out of break, it will lock two weaknesses at random. The Shadow Dragon can attack twice per turn. For attacks, the dragon can use physical attacks that sometimes inflict bleeding, fire AoEs, and a very annoying wind skill. When your unit is hit by this wind attack, they are forcefully swapped with the unit behind them. If a unit in that row hasn't acted yet when this swap occurs, that entire row loses its action for the turn. For that reason, having higher speed than the dragon is highly recommended for this fight. Additionally, the Shadow Dragon will sometimes use this attack when coming out of break, so it'll always go first, and speed isn't a factor anymore. This can be extremely annoying and just waste your time. Shadow Dragon's aura attack hits random party members multiple times with physical damage. As the Shadow Dragon preps this attack, it will also give itself an attack and crit up buff for one turn, which can significantly increase the damage that it deals to you. The Dragon will usually prep this attack after being out of break for around 5 or 6 consecutive turns. As the fight goes later, many of Shadow Dragon's attacks and behaviors will change. Its physical attacks gain the ability to inflict paralysis, which compounds on top of the wind swap skill to make the fight even more annoying. On top of that, the wind swapping skill will gain the ability to hit your entire front line, which means that your entire party could essentially lose an entire turn. Also, if that wasn't enough, Shadow Dragon will periodically increase its maximum shield points by 3, so you don't want this fight to drag out for too long. As the dragon's HP gets lower and lower, it will enter a new phase. When it preps its aura attack in this phase, it will increase its shields by 3 at the same time, almost as if it's mocking you for not breaking it in time while you've been getting paralyzed or getting your party forcefully swapped every few turns. It will also prep its aura attack much sooner after coming out of break, sometimes as early as on the third turn. For party members, your best options are characters that can contribute to as fast a kill as possible. The last thing you want is to be stuck in a long fight, getting parried or swapped every turn, and then eventually dying because you didn't break the dragon in a timely manner. Characters such as Fior, Corin, Teo, Loomis, Scarecrow, Hanit, Sophia, and Odette are just a handful of the great options you have for the fight, 
having 3 hit or greater multi hits to break it as soon as possible. For 4 stars, I recommend Sigrid and Trish for swords, Shelby for axes, Lucetta or Bertrand for bows, and Aslight for ice. Units that have access to multiple of the dragon's weaknesses are especially useful, since they can remain relevant even when the dragon locks its weaknesses away. As a reward for beating the Shadow Dragon, you get 250k experience across your entire party, which is a fantastic guaranteed EXP source that you can get every day, if it's not too much of a bother to repeat the fight. The first time you clear the fight, you will be rewarded with a Black Dragon Scarf in a treasure chest that appears in the front room of the tower, which is an accessory that gives 40 maximum SP and 6 SP regen per turn, a fantastic item to equip to your SP-hungry attacking units. There's also a random drop that you can get from defeating the dragon, which is the Black Dragon Scales. This accessory gives 20 defense, 20 magic defense, and 20 speed. This seems to drop at around a 5% drop rate, but you can force close your game in the battle results screen and try again if the scales don't drop. And that's everything that you need to know about the Dragon's Lair. While I'm sure a lot of you guys are already more than strong enough to take it on, there are still definitely a good chunk of the player base that will probably struggle with this boss. If you have any more questions about the dragon, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. And until next time, this has been Shizukats. See ya!